Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Montgomery County Council. Tonight, we'll hold a public hearing for the council to receive testimony on the Thrive Montgomery 2050 Planning Board Draft. This plan will amend the 1969 approved and adopted plan on wedges and corridors general plan for the Maryland Washington Regional District in Montgomery County and the 1993 general plan refinement of the goals and objectives for Montgomery County. Thrive Montgomery 2050 en encompasses broad countywide recommendations for land use, housing, the economy, equity, transportation, parks, and open space, the environment, historic resources, urban design, and arts and culture. These recommendations are intended to guide future master plans, county and state capital improvement processes, and other private and public initiatives that influence land use and planning in Montgomery County. Persons wishing to submit additional material for the council's consideration should do so before the close of business on July 9th. And each individual tonight will have two minutes to speak. Individuals will be alerted as they approach their two minutes, and may be disconnected. Also, there may be technical glitches, of course, during the public hearing. Ms. Kennedy, please introduce the public speakers, the speakers for the public hearing. Good evening. As the council president stated, everybody will have two minutes this evening for their testimony. I will be um, asking, telling you when you are out of time. We also have with us this evening, Diana Lavoie, who will be providing translation for some of our attendees this evening. Our first speaker tonight is council member Connor Crimmins. Mr. Crimmins, you have two minutes for your testimony and you may begin when you're ready. We need to you can unmute, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, uh, council President Hucker and members of the council, good evening. My name is Connor Crimmins. I'm a council member representing the town of Kensington tonight. The town of Kensington has been participating in the evolution of Thrive for the past 18 months, both with the planning staff and through regular updates to our residents. We support many of the ambitious policy goals of Thrive aimed at making living in Montgomery County more affordable, attainable, and equitable for all residents. That said, the town does wish to convey one aspect of Thrive that gives us deep concern. Specifically, the town is not only supportive of, but already engaged in diversifying housing options within the town. The town of Kensington is largely a single family home residential community. Understanding the importance of housing diversity options, the town adopted its 2012 Kensington Sector Plan, framed off the county's wedges and corridors general plan, to promote mixed use residential over commercial development that would focus redevelopment densities and heights toward our commercial quarter of Connecticut Avenue. As Thrive has been evolving to include its concepts as missing middle housing and growth corridors, the town of Kensington has been living this through the review and support of development projects along Connecticut Avenue and bisecting state highways that have resulted in the approval of over 100 MPDU housing units, townhomes, live work units, and rental properties that are bringing greater housing diversity to Kensington today. The current version of the draft plan advocates additional densification through infill development with the introduction of multifamily housing into single family residential zones. While the town is supportive of such housing options, it has deep concern of introducing these options without inclusion of standards for compatibility of form and scale with neighboring homes, buildings, and public spaces as was specifically defined for missing middle housing by its author. If the concept of compatibility is too vague, as indicated in the draft plan, then we ask that you enhance the concept with clear standards for form, height, setbacks, lock coverage, architecture, and site layout. This will promote not just complete communities, but compatible ones as well. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you for your testimony. Our second speaker tonight is Irene Lane. Ms. Lane, you may begin. You have two minutes. Good evening, my name is Irene Lane. Uh, while I am the vice mayor of the town of Chevy Chase, which is part of the Thrive Montgomery 2050 coalition, I speak to you tonight as an individual. Thrive is a market rate housing plan, but it could be a bold general plan for how land related to agricultural, urban, forest, and commercial activities can best serve our economy and greater community. Thrive could do this by incorporating actual strategies for addressing the three major issues our county faces today, which are affordable housing, climate resiliency, and the attraction of good paying jobs that enable residents to buy quality housing and provide the tax revenue necessary to pay for public infrastructure. First, affordable housing, by which I mean HUD defined housing that costs no more than 30% of your income. With more than 6,500 multifamily housing units in the construction pipeline in Bethesda area alone, the primary 
premise of not having enough market rate housing for 2050 is false. It's not having enough affordable housing in place for 2050. The county council should commit to addressing the shortfall by adding appropriate financing and construction strategies. Second, climate resiliency. By eliminating the chapter that focused on environmental challenges, Thrive focuses on public transportation as a way to address climate change. The county council should commit to addressing the current challenges posed by stormwater runoff, heat islands, electric grid capacity, and building carbon emissions. For example, Thrive must include strategies that tie in all new construction projects to clean energy, water waste, and other lead building standards. Third, good paying jobs. People move to an area for a job or educational opportunity, yet Thrive focuses on assigning activity centers as a, in, to a residential density model rather than redefining activity centers with future impact industries that will differentiate our county from other competitors and provide high paying jobs. Thrive should reimagine activity centers as national hubs for advanced research and perhaps carbon sequestration or renewable energy manufacturing or soil and plant sciences, rather than only looking at them as central points for housing. Thrive should be bold and comprehensive as it relates to land use. The future economic health of our county depends on it. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Diane Lynn. Ms. Lynn, you have two minutes for your testimony and you may begin. Ms. Lynn, are you there? Okay, I am, I'm sorry. That's okay, you may begin. Thank you. I'm Diane Lynn, president of the Wheaton Forest Civic Association. The missing middle housing strategy is controversial and consequential and should not be executed through a ZTA. That point should be clear in the Thrive Montgomery 2050 plan. By right until development is a prescription for disaster. We are a group of about 200 R60 single-family homes adjacent to the Wheaton Metro Station. Our community, which is over 60 years old, is multiracial, multiethnic, and economically diverse. My neighbors include nurses, teachers, cab drivers, government workers, salespersons, and retirees. We are mostly small, three-bedroom brick rambler homes on narrow streets with limited parking. We were and still are among the least expensive ownership housing in the county. We are usually the first house that an owner has purchased. Some move on to larger houses, but many stay in the community and retire here because it is so affordable. Probably one third of the community at any one time has turned their basement into an accessory apartment for relatives, caregivers, or simply to help pay the mortgage. The accessory apartment is by far the least expensive housing available. For someone seeking housing close to the Wheaton Metro, there's a large assortment of both rental and ownership options in the form of apartments, condos, and townhouses. The Wheaton Forest is not the exclusive housing near the Wheaton Metro. It is but one option available among many, and is among the most affordable for someone seeking a single-family home. Before you decide that plopping down a four-unit apartment or condo throughout this modest community is a good thing, I urge you to consider the impact. You'll be destroying the community depriving people of a choice for attainable housing that's becoming extinct. In fact, you'll be replacing this affordable housing with much more expensive housing. That's the reality of the missing middle house strategy. Lack of parking for residents, tradesmen and emergency vehicles, stormwater runoff, reduction of green space, green canopy, likely property tax increases. These are enough reasons to make sure that a house cannot be converted to a multi-dwelling unit by right through a ZTA. Ms. Thank Lynn, you. I'm sorry to interrupt, but your time is up. Thank you very much for your testimony tonight. Our next speaker this evening is Caroline Taylor. Ms. Taylor, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Good evening. I'm Caroline Taylor testifying on behalf of Montgomery Countryside Alliance. The draft plan aspires to much, but as has been noted in comments from others, including our colleagues, Stormwater Partners, the CAP Coalition, Audubon Naturalist Society, West Montgomery Citizens Association and the County Executive, there is some work that needs to be done to improve it. The draft plan falls short in ways that significantly weaken its ability to guide our county toward resilience. Between December 2020 and March 2021, various revisions made to the public hearing draft erased content largely relegating environmental protection, climate change response, 
and the role of the Agricultural Reserve to an appendix of suggested actions. The transmittal letter noted that the appendices are not part of the plan. We asked that the Council review the previous draft and return to the plan those deleted sections that best help Montgomery County meet its goals, especially those related to climate change resilience. Here our plea for a necessary focus on the environment, with emphasis on water resources and forests, through the words of County Resident Rachel Carson, of all our natural resources, water has become the most precious. In an age where man has forgotten his origins and is blind even to his most essential need for survival, water, among other resources, has become the victim of indifference. In conclusion, we applaud the plan's focus on racial equity and social inclusion, but caution that the focus on urbanism to the exclusion of or indifference to environmental stewardship, a robust local food system, and climate change response is deeply concerning. By what standard do we measure this plan's success? If we employ only a short-term focused economic lens, we fail. And we agree with the plan when it notes that there is little room for error. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Amanda Farber. Ms. Farber, you have two minutes for your testimony. You can begin. Good evening. My name is Amanda Farber. Thank you for this opportunity. I serve on the Bethesda IAC, Conservation Montgomery, and most recently participated in the Attainable Housing Work Group. I am speaking tonight as an individual. With limited time, I will focus my testimony on trees and trust and submit additional written testimony. First, trees. This council is aware of the benefits of trees in urban forests. However, trees and forests appear mostly as token mentions in the draft Thrive Plan, even though they are an important part of complete communities. So, first I ask that the council bring back the healthy and sustainable environment chapter. I thank the planning staff for their work on that section. Its contents deserve greater inclusion in Thrive. Second, I ask that the council include no net loss of forest policy goal in Thrive. Lastly, I ask that the council revisit our current tree laws. Trees planted or cut down today will help define our canopy in 2050. With that in mind, in April, I wrote to county agencies about the strengths and shortcomings of our tree laws. I received a response back last week from DPS, DEP, DOT, and planning with their initial recommended strategies for improvements. I request that the council help act on those strategies. Next, trust. The public deserves to be able to trust the planning process and the final Thrive 2050 product. Trust isn't built on pretty pictures, graphs, or buzzwords. It's built on public participation in the process and community confidence in the complete and thoughtful development and implementation of plans. Right now, there is still confusion and understandable questions regarding the Thrive Plan and new attainable housing recommendations. So as the Council reviews Thrive Now and eventually reviews the attainable housing recommendations, I hope there can be greater trust and confidence in the process and final product. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Ronit Aviva Dancis. Ronit, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you very much. My name is Renita Viva Dances. I live at 8708 First Avenue in Silver Spring at the eighth floor. Um, thought you guys should all take a look at my neighborhood um, where any number of wonderful people live. In listening to the arguments, I went back to the original Supreme Court decision in 1926, which under which, which is the basis of our zoning today. And I think it's, I ask that the council members think, consider the language of this Supreme Court decision, which refers to apartment buildings and their residents, presumably, such as myself, as parasites and nuisances. I think we're not, we haven't made very any new arguments in the past 95 years or so. To quote Euclid B. Amber, with particular reference to apartment homes, very often, the apartment house is a mere parasite constructed in order to take advantage of the open spaces and attractive surroundings created by the residential character of the district. 
coming of one apartment house is followed by others, interfering by their height and bulk with the free circulation of air and monopolizing the rays of the sun. Until finally, the, and at the end, finally the residential character of the neighborhood and its desirability as a place of detached residences are utterly destroyed. Under these circumstances, apartment houses, which in a different environment would not be only entirely unobjectionable, but highly desirable, come very near to being nuisances. Parasites, nuisances. This is hateful language. It is bigoted language. This is the language upon which our zoning system has been based for nearly 100 years and is time to end it. I urge the council to to move with this plan. I urge it to I urge the council to be as creative and as progressive as possible, making sure we have as much housing as we need on a rapidly warming planet. And I would ask the council and all of those today who speak of compatibility and of desirability to consider what, to consider the source here. Look at Euclid, look at, you know, look at me and my neighbors here in this building. I'm so sorry your time is up, but thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Our next speaker this evening is Hesse Harris. Ms. Harris, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin when you're ready. We see you there. We just need you to unmute and then we can hear you. There we are. Now, can you hear me? We can. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I'll start again. So I'm Hesse Harris. I live in Silver Spring and I'm testifying in opposition to Thrive Montgomery 2050 for the following reasons. First, there will be a negative effect on lower income residents. <laughs> Their homes will be replaced with attainable housing, which they will not be able to afford. That happened in Washington, D.C. under urban renewal, where poor blacks were evicted from their substandard homes in Southwest with the promise they could return after new construction. They couldn't afford the new homes built. It also happened in other areas. As a matter of fact, James Baldwin, the famous black writer, ref writer, referred to urban renewal as Negro removal. If he were alive today, I'm sure he would explain that characterization. Second, there is unacceptable social engineering plan. The communities are to be designed with a preconceived notion of the degree to which people will interact that dis disregards individuality, right of association, right of privacy, and personal liberty. It is frequently stated that diversity is celebrated and highly regarded in Montgomery County. However, as is with much of the county in the county, these plans gloss over individual and cultural preferences and differences. Okay, there, there are no existing employment opportunities to, to support the new housing envisioned. It is irresponsible to build based on projections. There are too many variables that can affect the outcome. There are some mobility issues that are to be uh, addressed. There's no provision for emergency vehicle traffic, police, ambulance, and fire trucks, nor for large delivery or service trucks. And of course, there's a problem with parking. Walking and biking, which is how lauded and applauded here, are not appropriate in cold or inclement weather. Also, it doesn't uh, work favorably for those who are in, uh, physically impaired. Mass transit, if Metro goes down, the Washington metropolitan area goes down. If it goes down in part, other lines will be affected. affected. I've lived Harris, here. So, I'm so that. sorry to interrupt, but your time okay. is up. Okay, that's fine. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your testimony. Uh -huh. Sure. Our next speaker this evening is Philip Bogdanov. Mr. Bogdanov, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin. Thank you to the council members for an opportunity to contribute. Okay. I'm a resident of Tacoma Park. I'm also a member of the Cedar Land Ecosystem Study Group. We previously provided oral and written testimony in November and December last year. Largely, that testimony pointed out some big gaps in the assumptions about the future we're heading into that do not appear to have been accommodated at all in the revision of the Thrive Plan. 
Our society, systems, and standard of living are very tightly dependent upon and coupled to the consumption of fossil fuels. There's a 96% correlation between energy consumption and GDP. It will take multiple decades to shift from fossil fuels to renewable sources of energy, and we will need to keep burning fossil fuel in order to manufacture solar panels, wind turbines, etc. Nationally, wind and solar provide about 3.5% of our energy inputs. In the state of Maryland, it's less than 1.4%. It's going to take 30 years to replace even half of the fossil fuel inputs. So we're going to be stuck with it for a long time. Solar and wind will not replace the liquid fuels needed for transportation, especially for diesel long haul trucking. Solar and wind will not replace the 9 or 10 calories of fossil fuels that are behind every calorie of the food we eat. Global fossil fuel production is beginning its decline. Now, beginning with petroleum. Decline rates may be in the range of 6 to 8%. Shell Oil has indicated that they're anticipating a 2 to 7% decline rate going forward. This means petroleum production will be half of what it currently is in 9 to 12 years, 6 to 8% decline rate. The Hirsch Report, published in 2005, was created by request from the U.S. Department of Energy, indicated it would take two or more decades to mitigate the decline of petroleum. We have lost those two decades and hence are woefully ill-prepared. Coupled with climate change, this means our food supply will be increasingly at risk. The 30-year Thrive Plan should address these threats as top priorities. It Mr. does Bastanoff, not. I am so sorry to interrupt, but your time is up. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony this evening. Our next speaker is Eunice Morales. Ms. Morales has requested language assistance. Ms. Morales, you have two minutes. You may be Señorita, ready. Señorita Morales puede hablar y como intérprete le pido, por favor, que usted haga una pausa después de cada cuantas oraciones, cada dos o tres oraciones, y eso me permite interpretar lo que usted ha dicho. Gracias. Por favor, siga. Gracias. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Eunice Morales y resido en el área de Witton. Actualmente imparto clases de costura a más de 25 mujeres residentes del condado de Montgomery y hoy tenemos otras 30 en lista de espera. Good evening. My name is Eunice Morales and I live in the uh, Wheaton area. Currently, I give sewing classes to more than 25 women who live in Montgomery County and we have uh, another 30 who are on a waiting list. Estos cursos, cursos son impartidos a través de donaciones y apoyo de diferentes iglesias locales e Impact Silver Spring. Hoy día me dirijo a ustedes como residente de Montgomery para pedirles que consideren la implementación de carreras técnicas en todos los distritos del condado. These courses are supported by donations and support from different churches, local churches, and they impact Silver Spring. Today, I'm speaking to you as a resident of Montgomery to ask that you consider the consider creating technical careers in all of the districts of the county. A través de las clases que imparto, he podido ver el cambio en nuestras residentes y sobre todo el espíritu de emprendimiento de estas que desarrollan una vez que terminan su curso. Through these classes that I give, I've been able to see the change in our residents and especially the entrepreneurial spirit that they develop uh, one of, once the courses are over. Los adultos también merecemos segundas oportunidades y carreras como repostería, belleza, reparación de autos, barbería, carpintería, costura y más. Podrían generar nuevas empresas y sobre todo crear nuevas plazas laborales. We adults also deserve second chances and careers like confectionery, beauty, car repair, barbershop, carpentry, sewing, and more, these could generate new businesses and especially create new jobs. Me gustaría que estas carreras técnicas estén complementadas con cursos de educación financiera y de generación de nuevas empresas en donde se les enseña a los alumnos a poder administrar su capital y sobre el proceso y recursos para establecer su propio negocio. I would like these technical courses to be complemented with financial education courses and uh, and also on the creation of new businesses 
where it is taught, where the students are taught how to administer their own capital, their own money, and uh, to learn the process and the resources to establish their own business. Estoy segura de que con la implementación de estos cursos, el condado de Montgomery será una nueva versión mejorada de lo que es hoy día. I'm sure that with the implementation of these courses, Montgomery County would be a better version of what it is right now. Good Gracias. Buenas noches. Good night and thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Jason Maxstein. Mr. Maxstein, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin. Hello, council members. Thank you for having me today. My name is Jason Maxstein, and I'm a father of three young kids living in North Potomac. I'm here to testify about the public engagement and schools as they pertain to Thrive 2050. Thrive is an extremely important document that will map out our county's direction for the next 30 years. We need more public engagement, more publicity with wider reach, more signs and advertising money, and make sure that we get more involved in this process. I know it can be hard to get many people interested in this, and the planning department, I feel, is doing their best. But this process needs to be much more geographically diverse. For example, in the last series of public testimony, Silver Spring, Chevy Chase, Bethesda, and Tacoma Park alone were highly overrepresented, making up over 75% of testimonies, despite only making up 16.4% of residents based on 2019 census data. This means they had over 4.6 times more representation than would have been expected. In that meeting, you heard voices from just nine different, very connected and traditionally well-off towns. There are also a lot of the same voices commenting each comment period as I've reviewed the past public comment periods of Thrive. Mid-county and up-county were especially underrepresented. The most up-county public members giving input last time were in Rockville. Now on to schools. It seems like there's a massive oversight to not include more about schools here in the next 30-year plans. We need a distinct plan to incorporate schools based on new housing patterns. MCPS has shown time and again they cannot be trusted to adequately plan for new housing and changes in populations. Whether it's through co-locations, additional purchases where density is increased, or expansion, there should be more of this in the plan. For many of us parents and students, schools are a primary community for a large portion of our lives. It makes no sense to have everything closer to home, walkable communities, 15-minute communities, and then not adequately plan for schools to be part of these communities. In conclusion, I would like to see more resources put into getting more engagement from those underrepresented in the areas of the uh, county and more specific plans regarding MCPS schools to accommodate growth. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Sarah Redinger. Ms. Redinger, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin. Good evening, Council President and Council Members. Uh, my name is Sarah Redinger, and I'm a Vice President with Habitat for Humanity Metro Maryland. Um, Habitat is extremely pleased with Thrive 2050. We applaud the county for lifting up housing as a right for all people, for highlighting the importance of housing and addressing racial inequities, and supporting increased density, especially along transit corridors. It's critical that as a county, we implement policies that ensure housing affordability at all income levels in all communities. Habitat is particularly concerned with the homeownership gap between white and black households and white and Latinx households, a gap of 36 points and 22 points respectively. Habitat strongly supports the plan's recommended actions aimed at promoting racial and economic diversity in housing in every neighborhood. We also encourage the inclusion of financial education and credit training, um, as well as substantial down payment assistance program for income qualified residents. We also support increasing opportunities to build more attainable missing middle housing by rezoning single family neighborhoods along transit corridors and throughout the county. This can play an important role in decreasing the ownership gap, especially if we provide development standard bonuses for building affordable units. Habitat also supports the actions included to increase production of housing to better match supply with demand. In addition to the recommended actions, we encourage the county to support the retrofitting and development of accessible homes to meet the needs of older residents and residents with disabilities. Thrive 2050 is an exciting vision for the future of Montgomery County, but the real work starts after the approval of the general plan. We look forward to working together to ensure this vision is enacted through tangible legislative, administrative, and policy changes. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Valerie Salazar. Ms. Salazar, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin. Thank you for saying my name right. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Valerie Salazar, and I am a resident of the only Sandy Spring area. I wanted to highlight the significance of developing, but most importantly, executing a local economy plan. 
I am a working resident who's had the advantage of receiving an education, who speaks the language and understands the system in which I live. But there are taxpayers in the county who may not fit with my description and have to think outside the box to cover their basic needs. And so I think it's our job to advocate and push for out of the box ways and together think of alternative strategies that will reach all of them. Such as vocational training programs, like Eunice mentioned, to achieve the upcoming developmental strategies. If you plan to do a more green effort, for example, like changing AC systems and old buildings, purposely create trainings in electricity, air conditioning, solar energy, et cetera, for low income residents and establish them in low income neighborhoods. Or if you want to be more intentional, even vocational English classes for immigrants whose first language is in English. We have to give the people the tools they need to grow. In other words, we have to teach them how to fish. Also, allow and hire entrepreneurs, micro and small business resident owners to bid and obtain county contracts. This supports and creates jobs. It puts our taxes to good use and it invests in our people. Lastly, continue supporting nonprofits that push for alternative democratic workplace models to reach financial stability. This way, the community can hold each other accountable and together create and innovate. Our community's vulnerability comes from need. And the best way to fight these needs is by empowering and investing in them. This way they can plug back into their communities and be a living proof of a success that is changing the system. Of course, with the intention of growing capacity, providing equal access to jobs and supporting alternative work models. The great plans and efforts the county has and plans to execute such as Strike 2050, combined with a grassroots implementation will only make us, the county, better, better together. So thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Tino Fragale. Tino, you have two minutes for your testimony and you may begin when you're ready. Thank you, Susan. Hi, y'all. My name is Tino and I support Thrive's vision to make Montgomery County more accessible to all, regardless of housing ownership, status, race, disability, and income. I appreciate this vision, but I'm worried about the extent of and how future community outreach will be done and was done for Thrive. In the working draft plan of Thrive 2050, there was a section included policy and actions related to improving engagement of diverse participants, including renters, people with disabilities, people of color, people experiencing language barriers, and others who are unrepresented in civic life, or underrepresented, excuse me. This language was removed from the working draft and was moved to an appendix. A friend of mine shared that that may have been because it was too technical. I get that. Some of the actions in the working plan, like conducting a biannual community outreach and engagement survey about participation and awareness about the outreach efforts, um, may seem like an overly specific thing to put in the plan. But I think we are sorely in need of specificity in how our Montgomery County government learns from and involves its people in governance. My job is knocking doors, all the doors, in a given community. And for the last couple years, I've almost exclusively knocked apartment buildings and almost all of the folks I speak with may know about a county service or two they're using, but they don't know. There are city committees, online surveys, Zoom rooms and council meetings where they can influence the way their government plans their cities, services and rules. We need specificity in our community engagement because these committees, Zoom rooms and other spaces of political influence are also often our only outreach strategies. But these existing outreach methods are not known to anyone I met knocking the Castle Boulevard apartments today or anyone I met during the door knocking I did yesterday. And there are folks who would love to participate in our planning processes. I know because I'm door knocking and flying for the Fairland Briggs Cheney Master Plan now. Getting specific by naming our outreach and engagement strategies early will help us know what tools we can invest in to engage a much more representative sample of our community so that master plans like Thrive can fully reach their important goals. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker tonight is Jonathan Rader. Mr. Rader, you also have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Uh, thank you to Council President Hucker and Council members for the opportunities to submit testimony on this important issue. My name is Jonathan Rader and I'm a renter in my late 20s living in Silver Spring and a member of the DSA. I'm testifying in support of the planning board draft of Thrive 2050 and urge you to maintain its bold vision for a sustainable, inclusive county. I love that Silver Spring is bursting with diversity of all kinds from a dense mix of varied housing types for people of all economic levels living together, as well as walkable and bikeable communities that reduce the need for a car. This type of physically, racially, and economically integrated community has a mix of shops, homes, restaurants, offices, and more. 
These sorts of places are the most sustainable since they foster a sense of locality and reduce the use of greenhouse gas emitters like cars. I love these parts of Silver Spring, but I believe we must and can do better with them. And I'm excited to see Thrive 2050's plans to increase and spread these aspects throughout Montgomery County. Thrive 2050 is prioritizing many of the steps necessary to take Silver Spring and Montgomery County as a whole towards this positive future. Some of the goals and policies I'm most excited about are the commitments to no longer planning or constructing new highways, making the transportation system more equitable with public transit funds, building more income restricted affordable housing units, deeply affordable housing and permanent supportive housing, adding more homes of all these types in major centers and communities, and planning for a wide range of housing types to meet diverse needs and foster a diverse population, and minimizing displacement while promoting integration. All this being said, I would urge the council members to go bigger and bolder with Thrive 2050. I would like to see it explicitly say that housing is a human right, as it was in previous drafts, and include more about socioeconomic integration. In addition, while Thrive's plans will help make housing more affordable in general, more needs to be done to make these neighborhoods and housing affordable to the lowest incomes. In conclusion, I wholly support the draft of Thrive 2050 and would urge you to follow its guiding values even more. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Dan Wilhelm. Mr. Wilhelm, you have two minutes. You may begin. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I sent a letter in, and I, with time limit, I am going to summarize some of the points in that. Greater Colesville Citizens Association supports urbanism as a planning principle for the Montgomery County growth. Development needs to be focused in a limited number of locations rather than dispersed. We support the plan to emphasize the importance of walking, biking, and transit, and thus reduce the reliance on cars. GCCA supports the Thrive Plan to focus growth along BRT corridors and in select towns, town centers, rural areas, as in illustrated in figure uh, 29. The growth area in that figure needs to be reduced to only these locations. The plan fails to link growth to the provision of transit. BRT and improved ride-on service need to exist concurrent with the provision of increased growth, which is especially required outside the Beltway. Without its provision, negative consequences will occur like that which happened in East County and with the 1981 master plan. We agree that the county and state need to stop planning and constructing new highways and major widening of existing roads. We strongly oppose any tempting attempt to change existing zoning, single family zoning uh, and by inserting missing middle housing types. Zoning protects neighborhoods from undesirable non-residential uses and does not lead to segregation. Colesville is very diversified. The provision of middle housing will not result in more attainable housing. The focus needs to be on the redevelopment of retail areas into mixed use developments. Any change in the zoning should continue to be by a master plan upgrade. The housing section fails to address one of the major costs that drive up the cost of housing and thus contribute to housing not being available or built. That is the cost of county impact taxes, LATR cost, recordation costs, building permits, and other fees. For a single family house, those costs could approach $100,000. The same Wilhelm, cost I, Mr. Wilhelm, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but your time is up. Thank you so much for your testimony this evening. Our next speaker is Eli Wykel. Mr. Wykel, you have two minutes as well. You may begin when you're ready. My name is Eli Wykel. I live in Tacoma Park, District 5. I'm testifying in support of Thrive 2050 on behalf of Jews United for Justice. Just as Abraham's tent was open on every side to welcome all, so too must our county be open and accessible to all residents. We applaud Thrive 2050's explicit acknowledgement of Montgomery County's history of discrimination and racism in housing. As Montgomery County grows more diverse today, it also grows demonstrably more segregated and less affordable. Thrive 2050 must plan to reverse these alarming trends. We strongly support many ideas in Thrive 2050 to address housing inequality, and I refer you to my written testimony. Additionally, we ask the council strengthen Thrive 2050's consideration for renters and housing affordability. Without considering renters, the measurement of Thrive's goals is incomplete. 
Similarly, we note that a neighborhood affordable to homeowners but unaffordable to renters is neither economically nor racially equitable. Please refer to our written testimony for additional recommendations. Thrive 2050 must be the beginning, not the end, of our response to Montgomery County's affordable housing crisis. We do not have 30 years to address the housing crisis. Our county grows more unaffordable for more people, renters and homeowners alike, every year. We are on the verge of an eviction crisis on the scale of which we have not seen in living memory. We do not have time to use Thrive 2050 as an excuse for failing to take immediate action, like extending the rent cap for, rent cap for a year after the state of emergency ends, reforming rocket docket evictions, ensuring much needed rent relief goes to tenants, expanding eviction moratorium and passing legislation such, such as Bill 5220 as an anti-rent gouging measure and ZTA 2007 to expand middle missing housing. We must not only see Thrive 2050 as an important vision, but also take action to guarantee that this vision becomes a reality. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Catherine Lucas McKay. Ms. McKay, you have two minutes, you may begin. Thank you. Um, seven months ago, I offered comments to the council on the first draft of Thrive 2050. And I want to note upfront that many of the concerns I raised at the time have been addressed. Not everyone has been satisfied with the changes that have been made, but I think it's important to express uh, the level of um, willingness to listen, learn, and respond that the uh, planning board has shown in developing this new draft. My wife and I moved to Silver Spring in 2013. We rented downtown and are now homeowners living in a modest town home in North Woodside. I'm disabled and rely heavily on Metro and ride on to get around, as well as the fantastic walkability of Silver Spring. Finding and actually winning this missing middle type and value home was a blessing. While I'm here in my personal capacity as a resident, I am the secretary of the Silver Spring Citizens Advisory Board, and my understanding of our community's needs is deeply informed by that experience. I'm also a researcher who spent more than a decade studying household financial security, including, including housing security. Increasing families' well-being and opportunities is my North Star in life. This county is for everyone, and Thrive 2050 overall is an effective approach to turning that as aspiration into fact. I have three main points. First, Thrive 2050 is a great plan that you council members should support, and as you consider it and amend it, please strengthen some aspects. Um, in particular, of uh, concern to me, the revised plan does now identify success metrics that could be used to evaluate the effectiveness of implementation of various parts of the plan, but the council should add some key milestones and benchmarks to establish how long to wait is too long to wait. Um, second, one thing that requires the council's attention is uh, content related to ensuring that development does not cause physical or cultural displacement of existing vulnerable communities. There is some content, but it needs strengthening. Housing preservation needs to be a critical part of our, our growth plan overall. Um, and I want to thank all of my fellow speakers for saying everything else that I would say in support of Thrive's uh, other housing elements. Rather than focusing more there, I'm going to wrap up by saying this plan could and should do more to knit together the various pieces of a multi-strategy approach to climate adaptation and resilience in the face of catastrophic change. The future of our county, our residents' well-being depends okay. on that. I'm sorry, but I have to end your testimony now. Thank you so much for being here this evening. Our next speaker this evening is Carolyn Lampilla. Ms. Lampilla, you have two minutes. You may begin. All right, thank you to the council for the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Carolyn Lampola and I'm a resident of South Silver Spring. I am testifying in favor of Thrive 2050 and urge the council to support the plan for an equitable, inclusive, and sustainable county. I've become engaged with Thrive over the last several months and I've become disheartened learning about how a county that prides itself on its progressive values, diversity, inclusivity was built through many redlining and exclusionary zoning policies that continue to have ramifications on our neighborhoods and county. I think that the planning board has done a great job recommending a variety of affordable and attainable housing all solutions, all of which we need. On a personal note, as a person with a disability, 
that prevents me from driving, I feel very fortunate to be able to live near public transportation and so many other amenities. A support thrives so more people have the opportunity to live within walking and biking distance of public transit, work, and other daily needs. As the plan outlines, not only are improvements to access and housing important for the well-being of residents, that will have positive and critical impacts on the local economy and the environment. Although I do also agree that more um, emphasis on the environment needs to be addressed. Um, I urge the County Council to review and approve Thrive 2050 according to the Planning Board's timeline. It's long past time to take these steps to address the past racist and classist zoning practices that led to segregation of people being left out of the county. The longer we wait, the more current or prospective county residents will choose a more affordable jurisdiction in the DMV. The time to act to ensure that Montgomery County is an equitable, inclusive, and sustainable county is now. Thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker is Martha Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez has requested language assistance. Señorita Rodríguez, uh, usted pasará ahora. Um, yo voy a interpretar cada varias, cada cuantas oraciones, así que por favor ya, haga una pausa después de decir varias oraciones. Pas Sigue, por favor. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Marta Rodríguez y vivo en la parte norte del condado de Montgomery. Good evening. My name is Marta Rodríguez and I live in the northern part of Montgomery County. Considero que para que el condado pueda prosperar, debe de adaptarse a los cambios que los avances tecnológicos traen. En este caso, me refiero a la instalación de paneles solares en viviendas. I believe that for the county to prosper, it needs to adapt to the changes that technological advances try, bring to, to us. In this case, uh, I'm referring to the installation of solar panels in homes. Actualmente, el Código de Bienes Raíces de Maryland, número 2-119, impide que las asociaciones de propietarios de vivienda del Estado nieguen a los propietarios de vivienda el derecho de instalar paneles solares en sus techos. Currently, Maryland Real Property Code Section 2-119 prevents homeowners associations in Maryland from denying homeowners the right to install solar systems. Las asociaciones de propietarios de viviendas tampoco pueden imponer limitaciones a los propietarios que resulten en incrementos significativos del costo de paneles solares y reduzcan considerablemente Homeowner associations also cannot impose limitations on homeowners that would significantly increase the cost of a solar system or significantly reduce its efficiency. Desafortunadamente, estas reglas no aplican para viviendas que están categorizadas como condominios. Unfortunately, these rules do not apply to homes that are categorized as condominium. Yo soy dueña de una townhouse categorizada como condominio y no puedo instalar paneles solares en mi vivienda porque técnicamente la asociación de condominios es dueña del exterior de mi vivienda. A pesar de que soy yo la que pago un costo mensual para que ellos le den el mantenimiento que corresponde cuando sea el caso. I'm the owner of a townhouse that is categorized as a condominium. And I may not install solar panels on my house because technically the Association of Condominiums is the owner of the exterior of my house. In spite of the fact that it is I who pay a monthly fee so that they are supposed to maintain uh, the building as necessary. Estoy aquí para pedirles que se establezcan medidas que limiten la capacidad de las asociaciones de condominios de prohibir la instalación de paneles solares. De promulgarse estas leyes no solamente impactarán positivamente la economía de sus residentes, 
sino que se alinea con las metas trazadas del condado para mejorar nuestro medio ambiente. I'm here to ask that you establish laws that limit the capacity of uh, homeowner associations to prohibit the installation of solar panels. With this, these laws would not only uh, create a positive impact on the economy of the residents, but it would be consistent with the goals set by the county to improve the environment. Gracias por la oportunidad. Thank you for the opportunity. Good night. Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Our next speaker this evening is Stu Simon. Mr. Simon, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin. Hey, Susan. Uh, hi. Yes. Uh, Sorry, I, ju I just want to let Ms. Rodriguez know that um, Maryland law prevents homeowners association of Maryland from denying homeowners the right to install solar. So I don't know what she's hearing from her HOA, but if she contacts um, my office or I'm sure um, DHCA, we'd be happy to try to work that out. Señorita Rodríguez, yo deseo que usted sepa que la ley eh, de hecho uh, prohíbe que las asociaciones de, de dueños uh, hagan esta prohibición. Uh, yo no sé lo que está pasando, uh, pero yo deseo que usted se comunique con mi oficina uh, y veremos cómo nos abordaremos este desafío. Ok, es con la asociación de condominios. It's okay. with the Association of Condominium. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hucker. Sure, we'll Mr. Try to follow up. Mr. Simon, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you, council members, for considering Thrive 2050 and scheduling this public hearing. Uh, my name is Stu Simon. I live in Chevy Chase within walking distance of downtown Bethesda. While I'm here as an individual, individual I'm proud to report that a group I co-chair, the Adachi Alum Climate Action Team, Last week voted unanimously to support the goals of sustainable climate justice that are behind Thrive 2050, and that the Montgomery County Faith Alliance for Climate Solutions, MC Facts, which is made up of representatives from more than 50 diverse faith congregations across the county, also has expressed their overwhelmingly overwhelming support for Thrive 2050 goals. The Book of Bray Sheet, you know as Genesis, describes God entrusting man as a steward of all God's creations on earth. But we are failing. The decades of warnings about climate change are now coming true. Yesterday, British Columbia hit 116 degrees, a new record for Canada. Arizona and California appear to be in the worst drought that area has experienced in 20,000 years. And this is just the start of ever worsening climate change impacts. The goals proposed in Thrive 2050 are one of the few solutions to climate change that are a win-win proposition. More diverse, more diverse affordable housing, facilitating a healthier, less energy intensive lifestyle based around walking and biking, fewer miles driven, leading to cleaner air, less traffic, and less greenhouse gas emissions, and all at little or no net cost to the county. Several hundred thousand more people are expected to move into our county in the coming decades. With Thrive 2050, we can plan for this smartly by encouraging denser multifamily housing and businesses around mass transit hubs. The alternative is ever longer, stressful, climate-destroying commutes and continued development and destruction of forests and sequestering <laughs> soils. For our children and grandchildren's sake, please move as fast as you can to implement sustainable, nature-conserving, Thrive 2050 goals to help ensure that we have a future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simon. Our next speaker this evening is Patrick Cavanaugh. Mr. Cavanaugh, you have two minutes and you may begin. Hello and thank you. My name is Patrick Cavanaugh. I'm a resident of Silver Spring. I live in the Sligo Park Hills neighborhood. I urge the county to approve the Thrive 2050 general plan. This plan is a step in the right direction towards allowing current and future residents freedom to live in the most popular areas of our county and to ensure that people aren't priced out of living here in the next 30 years. As someone who's a renter, lived in the county for the last six years, I know it can be pretty expensive to live here. We have a lot of good things about our county, parks, transit accessibility, jobs, performing arts, cultural events. We need to ensure these things stay accessible even as more people are going to come here and enjoy them. Two aspects of this plan I really like are the support for missing middle housing and increased walkability and bikeability. Uh, our current zoning forbids missing middle housing like duplexes, triple deckers, and townhomes in many places. And if you can get it approved, you need a complicated legal process. To allow denser home types to be built will give more opportunities for residents and future residents to buy or rent a home because there will be more homes. In the neighborhood I grew up in outside of this state, I lived in a single family house. On my same street, other residents lived in triple-deckers, duplexes, 
The compatibility concerns that others have raised do not seem to create a problem. Secondly, further investment in protected bike lanes, trails, and sidewalks opens up the ability for residents to choose to make trips without a car if they want to. Bicycling in this county is still not safe enough if you choose to leave the confines of our park trails. Even walking across some streets can be feeling dangerous and actually be dangerous. In summary, I think the new general plan is a good step towards a future that makes our county more welcoming, affordable, and safe. I thank you for listening and I urge you to approve this plan. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Shruti Batnagar. Shruti, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin when you're ready. Good evening, my name is Shruti Bhatnagar. I'm chair of the Sierra Club Montgomery County Group. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. Sierra Club Montgomery County supports Thrive 2050. This plan will help address three key issues of great importance to Sierra Club, socioeconomic equity, climate change, and economic development. I'm highlighting some of the points from our more detailed written testimony. We need strong housing that is affordable at a variety of price points. We must no longer separate neighborhoods and communities along racial socioeconomic lines. More racially and socioeconomically integrated communities can help replace our current high poverty and low poverty schools. We urge for stronger policies and language in the plan that align with the county's Racial Equity and Social Justice Act and strengthen the community outreach and engagement efforts to be more inclusive of communities of color that are most disproportionately affected by climate change. The Thrive Plan concentrates a new development and redevelopment in compact mixed use, mixed income, pleasant, walkable, bikeable neighborhoods along transit accessible corridors. We urge you to remove M83 from the master plan of highways and transit ways. Reduced automobile travel will reduce vehicle miles traveled, greenhouse gas and air and water pollution. We support the plan's recommendation of increasing the number of parks, protecting our parks as natural solutions for climate resilience, biodiversity and habitat protection, and fostering healthy communities. We support creating more opportunities and eliminating barriers for underserved communities to enjoy wonders of our park system. No net loss of forest has also been a priority goal for the Sierra Club Maryland chapter in efforts to reduce the State Forest Conservation Act. We urge the council to update the county's forest conservation law and set a policy for no net loss of forest. This would be an important step towards protecting our natural resources as key climate mitigation prevention measures. Buildings are the largest contributor of greenhouse gas emissions in the county. We urge the council to adopt the 2018 IGCC Green Construction Code. Finally, Thrive proposes to increase our ability to recruit and retain top level employers and employees, thus spurring economic development and help the county become a more vibrant and attractive place to live and work. Thank you again for the opportunity to present Sierra Club's strong support for Thrive. Thank you for your testimony this evening. Our next speaker will be Robert Bine. Mr. Bine, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you. Um, there are a lot of ideas raised in Thrive 2050. Some of them are excellent, but others seem to ignore reality. For example, the draft plan doesn't take into account how life in Montgomery County will change as a result of the pandemic, whether it relates to a likely reduction in revenues to the county, or how permanent working from home will become with its related effect on commuting, or how many people will remain unemployed with all of those ramifications. Also, the elderly aspect is particularly troubling, uh, given the likely growth in that population over the next 20 to 30 years. A Montgomery County Planning Department report projects that by 2040, those over 65 will be more than 20% of the population, the second largest population group. It's unrealistic to expect this age group will be walking and biking or standing out in the rain, the snow, the heat, the cold, waiting for public transportation. In fact, that would be downright dangerous. And given the weather conditions in the general Bethesda area, as an example, it's not just the elderly who won't be riding bikes or walking to work. Did you know that in 2020, there were 263 days when there was precipitation, temperatures below 32 degrees, or temperatures above 85 degrees. Drive to 2050 also wants to provide so-called middle market housing. Rather than increasing density by building more housing, why not convert all those office buildings that will no longer be filled after the pandemic into apartments? 
then people can really walk to work and to shops without getting into their cars. Let the planning department spend more time developing the details of that plan. In its present form, the county council must not approve the plan. It's too soon. Let's first see the impact of the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Carmen Maria Hernandez. Ms. Hernandez has requested language assistance. Señorita Herman Hernandez, por favor, cuando usted uh, okay. hable, cuando hable, yo voy a interpretar. Yo quiero hablar porque hablé este país, y entonces ahí estamos por el mismo. Gracias. Por favor, okay. siga. Eh, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Carmen Hernández. Soy organizadora comunitaria en el área de Wheaton y trabajo para Impact Silver Spring. Good evening. Uh, my name is Carmen Hernandez, and I'm a community organizer in the area of Wheaton. I work for the organization called Impact Silver Spring. Eh, durante 10 años trabajando en el condado de Montgomery y en contacto diario y directo con la comunidad, he podido observar la falta de equidad y la dificultad que existe para acceder a una vivienda digna. During the last 10 years working in Montgomery County and in direct day-to-day -day contact with the community, I've been able to see the lack of uh, housing, uh, uh, adequate housing. Eh, los complejos de apartamentos administrados por compañías locales descuidan al extremo la atención y el mantenimiento de los servicios básicos de los edificios, colocando a cientos de familias en situaciones de riesgo para su salud. Esto incluye a complejos de apartamentos que reciben fondos y son subsidiados por el gobierno del condado. The apartment complexes in their great majority uh, uh, are being administered uh, in ways that are extremely careless as far as the attention they give to maintenance of their buildings. And this puts uh, hundreds of families in situations that are hazardous for their health. Eh, esto incluye a complejos de apartamentos que reciben fondos y son subsidiados por el condado. And this includes complexes that are receiving funds and are subsidized by the county. El acceso a la compra de casa propia es un sueño difícil y lejos de alcanzar. The, count, the access to buying your own house is a very difficult dream, very difficult to achieve that. Debido a los altos costos de la propiedad, convirtiéndose en una de las razones por la que los residentes se mudan a condados vecinos. So this becomes very difficult to have access to, to one's home, and it is one of the reasons why people move to our neighboring counties. En otros casos, se quedan sacrificando la economía familiar para que sus hijos reciban una mejor educación. En otros casos, people continue to live here, sacrificing their family budget so that their kids can get good education. Pero una vez concluida, abandonan el condado debido al alto costo. But once their schooling is over, then they leave the county because of the high cost of living. Eh, firmemente solicito a este consejo dar prioridad a las políticas y medidas necesarias. So I very firmly ask this council to consider the politics, uh, the policies and the measures that are necessary to ensure that uh, they have access, that people have access to adequate housing. Y eh, cuando sea el caso, apliquen sanciones ejemplares a las compañías que no cumplan las normativas que hoy actúan con impunidad. And I ask them also that where it is appropriate that they apply exemplary sanctions against those companies that are not complying with the norms that are set. Gracias por su consideración. Thank you for considering this. Thank you for your testimony. Gracias por our, su testimony. Our next, first, our next speaker this evening is Nadia Kudasheva. Yes, Ms. Kudasheva, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin. Hello. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. My name is Nadia Kudasheva. This is my friend, Rebecca Mann. We both grew up in Montgomery County. Rebecca's family is local to the county, while my family came here as immigrants. We both attended Poolesville High School and the University of Maryland. Now she owes a duplex in New Hampshire Estates in Silver Spring and a rent nearby in DC. We both work for companies based in North Bethesda and our families continue to live in Gaithersburg. As young people who are in the midst of starting our careers and making investments in our futures, 
We are deeply invested in seeing Montgomery County embrace a bold vision for a sustainable, inclusive, and growing county. We support the Thrive 2050 plan, but urge the county to go further, particularly with regards to transit and 15-minute living. We strongly endorse everything that Jane Lyons, Dan Reed, Ray Kimbra, and Seth Grimes have said in the last session regarding housing, openness to immigration, and the East-West divide. We need to plan for a denser, more sustainable future. We need to have more housing where short trips are safe and walkable, and where longer trips are made easily by bike, bus, or train. Where communities are growing and connected between east and west of the county. In 30 years, we want Montgomery County to be a good place for us to live, work, and possibly raise families. We'd love to see a county that is doing all it can to fight climate change, as well as leading the way in creating integrated communities with a variety of housing types. And we have a long way to go, but we're here tonight because we believe it's possible. As a heavily democratic county, we merely need to live up to our ideals and put them into action. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Olivia Delaplane. Ms. Delaplane, you have two minutes. You may begin. Hello. My name is Olivia Delaplane. I currently live in Long Branch and grew up in East Bethesda. I'm here in support of the Thrive 2050 plan, particularly supporting its emphasis on providing dense, missing middle housing and walkable and bike friendly communities. I loved being able to walk, bike and take transit everywhere I needed to growing up in Bethesda. The neighborhood I was in is single family zoned, but is one of the rare spots in the county that provides the kind of dense, walkable neighborhood that Thrive 2050 seeks to create more of. I support the direction of Thrive because I believe that places like East Bethesda can and should absolutely accommodate more residents and allow for more dense housing without harmful parking minimums so that more people can walk, bike, and take the bus or metro to everything they need as opposed to contributing to sprawl. Now I live in a fourplex, the one you see behind me, in a neighborhood full of missing middle housing, and I'm in support of building more places like the one I live in now and the neighborhoods like the one I grew up in. I'd love to be able to live with members of my family in a duplex as they age in places that are meaningful to us, and I'd love for everyone in the county to be able to do the same. I'd also like to emphasize that the plan could do more in terms of protecting renters, considering rent stabilization, anti-rent gouging policies, and considering how community land trusts can be helpful tools in meeting our housing goals. To conclude, I support Thrive because I would love to see a coffee shop slash library slash arts hub like we have in downtown Silver Spring, walking distance to everyone in the county. I urge you to support the planning board's draft of the plan while going even further to make MoCo affordable, sustainable, and safe for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker this evening is Joan Warren. Ms. Warren, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Hi, um, my name is Joan Warren and I live in Silver Spring. I think that most of us would agree that the general goals related to housing as outlined in the Thrive 2050 plan are well intended. The Thrive document presents trends for the growing number of households who are spending more than 30% of their income on housing. The data clearly demonstrate that we need more affordable housing. However, as noted by many speakers, finding such housing in Montgomery County is very difficult. Given that achieving the goal of more affordable housing is unlikely, the Thrive 2050 plan and the planning board have added the term attainable housing to the discussions of housing needs. The definition of attainable housing boils down to a range of housing that is suitable to a range of income levels. What has happened to affordability? In March 2021, the Planning Board created the HEAT team to advise them on how to increase attainable housing. The process has been moving at light speed. Based on input from the HEAT team, the Planning Board has recently recommended upzoning, for, Planning Board staff, excuse me, has recently recommended upzoning for significant portions of the county. However, the areas targeted for upzone near transit centers have the most expensive land, making it unlikely that any higher density housing would be affordable. Instead, the least expensive homes in the area near transit would be targeted by developers to be torn down and replaced with more dense housing that is more expensive. I would ask that the county the council considers several things. 
First, most citizens only have a vague awareness of Thrive 2050 and almost no one knows about the actions about the attainable housing strategy. Second, the process of creating the HEAT team to advise the planning board and the pace at which it has proceeded have largely excluded any input from county residents. This is not an acceptable way to make such important decisions. I would encourage the county to pause action related to upzoning to allow residents to become fully informed about the proposed plans and how they might impact their communities. Finally, I would encourage the county to consider proactive governor efforts that are required to produce what the county truly needs and increase in affordable housing. Thank you for your consideration of these comments. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Margaret Shope. Ms. Shope, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, council. My name is Margaret Shope. And um, tonight I am representing Dayspring Church in Germantown, Maryland. Dayspring Church has been a retreat center for 68 years since 1953, providing people with 206 acres of sacred space for personal and organized spiritual retreats. From our beginning, we have lived in the, at the intersection of faith and ecology. And in this time of global climate change, which is not going away, we try to live in ways that will restore the sacred community of all life for all neighbors and for the earth. I'm sure you know that Day Spring borders the right of way of Mid County Highway Extended. Our faith community has joined advocating with others for transit alternatives for decades. So to keep the interior forest and the well-established communities intact. We request that the council vote during Thrive for no new highways, rather than voting for the loophole change of no new highways for cars. As you know, this could target M83 to be built for buses. We ask for Mid-County Highway to be removed from all master plans. We ask you to enable in your votes to consider enabling all residents of the county to thrive now and through 2050. We ask what you are truly committed to and who you are truly committed to. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker is Manelis Castillo. Manelis has requested language assistance. Ms. DeVoy. Senorita Castillo, usted hablará ahora. Yo voy a interpretar párrafo por párrafo o varias oraciones a la vez. Así que después de hablar varias oraciones, por favor, haga una pausa para que yo pueda interpretar. Okay. Siga. Gracias. Mm, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Manelis Castillo y vivo en Aspen Hill. Good evening. My name is Manelis Castillo and I live in Aspen Hill. Me dirijo a ustedes con la esperanza de poder generar cambios para mi comunidad. I'm speaking uh, to you with the hope of creating some change for our community. Recientemente he visto varios desalojos en complejos de apartamentos cercanos a donde yo vivo y he quedado traumada la manera en que la oficina del Cherry ejecuta las órdenes de desalojo es un inhumana, humillante y traumatizante para los niños. Es por eso que quisiera pedir que como condado pionero que son, sean los primeros en establecer un método de desalojo digno y humano para todos los residentes de Montgomery. Recently, I've seen various evictions in apartment complexes near to where I live, and I have felt traumatized. The manner in which the office of the sheriff, the sheriff's office, has executed these orders, these eviction orders, is inhumane, humiliating, and traumatizing for the children. It's for this reason that I ask that as a pioneering county, as you are, that you be the first in establishing an eviction method that is dignified and humane for all the residents of Montgomery. Por tal razón, les pido que se establezcan normas de desalojo en las que los oficiales hablen y traten a los residentes con respeto, que les permitan tomar los artículos y documentos esenciales, 
antes de hacer su trabajo y sobre todo que se le asegure de sacar de manera pacífica un, a menores de edad para reducir el trauma que deja ellos. I ask that you establish norms for eviction that uh, so that the officials speak with and treat the residents with respect that they uh, that this permits them to take their articles their own their their possessions and documents that are essential take them before they uh, are are evicted and especially that they uh, are that the children are removed in a peaceful way to reduce the trauma that they experience que el condado pro, provea por lo menos dos meses un lugar provisional para familias con hijos menores de edad para que no tengan que pasar la noche en la calle. That the county provide for at least two months of a provisional place for families with young children to stay so that they don't have to spend the night in the street. Que el condado establezca una ley que le permita a familias desalojadas no ser discriminadas por su historial de desalojo al momento de aplicar por otra vivienda. And that the county establish a law that permits evicted families or that en enables evicted families not to be facing discrimination because of their history of having been evicted when they seek another place to live. Que el condado cuente con unidad de almacenamiento para que no le tiren a la calle las pertenencias a los desalojados. And that the county have storage units so that the uh, people being evicted, that their possessions are not thrown out in the street. El establecimiento de un programa digno de desalojo es algo necesario, humanitario y que pro, podría marcar la pauta para que otros condados hagan lo mismo. Muchísimas gracias. The establishment of a program for dignified evictions is necessary, humanitarian, and it could set the course for other counties to do the same. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, Ms. Castillo. Our next speaker this evening is Diane Cameron. Ms. Cameron, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Ms. Cameron, if you could unmute, then we can hear you. That would be great. Good evening. My name is Diane Cameron, and I'm with the TAME Coalition, Transit Alternatives to Mid-County Highway Extended. We urge your strong support for this part of the Thrive Transportation Policy. Quote, Stop planning or constructing new highways or major road widenings. Adoption of this no new highways policy frees up resources needed to build and maintain a world-class transit system, including for the up county. We also urge your support for this related item in the Thrive Actions document, quote, remove master planned but unbuilt highways and road widenings. TAME requests that proposed M83 highway be listed as a planned but unbuilt highway to be removed from all of the master plans. Our many allies, including Action Committee for Transit, Sierra Club, Audubon Naturalist, and the CAP Coalition have joined us in calling for M83 highway to be removed from all the master plans. It's now up to you, the council, to remove M83 from the master plans. As long as you allow M83 to remain in the master plans, it can be revived and built at any time. This would be a health disaster and a climate injustice. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Brenda Freeman. Ms. Freeman, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. 
Um, yes, my name is Brenda Freeman. I live in um, on Dale Drive in Silver Spring. I have several concerns about this plan. The first is that there's an involvement of the Coalition of Smarter Growth, Montgomery for All, and Greater Greater Washington. All these groups have paid lobbyists and are largely funded by developers, and the plans reflect this. Then there are the shifting goalposts. Initially, this was presented as affordable housing. It is now being presented as attainable housing. They aren't the same. There is a myth of deep public engagement as we emerge from a pandemic. However, there was virtually no written information of public announcements on Thrive sent to county residents. This is not a democratic process. A third session is needed, for example, for residents who signed up to testify tonight but who won't be able to do so. Public interest increases as more people become aware of Thrive Montgomery's impact on them. Now, the planning board has evidently supported some zoning changes that were made by a non-democratic process without consulting impacted homeowners. Then there are the, the divide and conquer tactics by calling residential zoning entitlement zoning when it was actually the county zoning. Then there are claims that seniors are overhoused. How do you know who is overhoused? Next is the dishonest representation of moderately priced housing. Using photos of a townhouse in DC's historic Cleveland Park as an example of moderately priced housing. It's not moderate and it's not in Montgomery County. Then the emphasis on rentals instead of owner-occupied housing doesn't give people an opportunity to gain equity through ownership. Then there are the questions, who pays? Nowhere are the costs to taxpayers who subsidize the infrastructure for developers mentioned. The public needs to know the cost. Ms. Freeman. Finally, no plans for economic growth, uh, growth, but plans for low wage rentals. What are the plans to increase income in Montgomery County, which would help people afford to live here? Ms. Freeman, Thank I'm you. sorry. Thank you very much for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Darrell Singh. Mr. Singh, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you, and good evening. My name is Darrell Singh, and I live in Bethesda for in, in immigrating to the U.S. I have three children, including a son who goes to Sligo Creek Elementary and a pair of 18-month-old twins. I recognize that I speak from a place of privilege and that I've had the fortune to live somewhere that provides great opportunity for me and my children. And I do not want to hoard that opportunity. I want a Montgomery County that provides opportunity to all. I was just excited to see the Thrive Plan's in vision of inclusive, sustainable urbanism. I love Montgomery County's diversity, the sheer number of cultures, the ability to get great food. And I want my children to live in a county with mixed income communities and vibrant centers with a mix of homes, restaurants, and shops. One of the great changes from the pandemic was the creation of streeteries in places like downtown Bethesda. And what a joy it was to see these places filled with people enjoying life instead of being used as subsidized storage for vehicles in the form of parking. I'm also passionate about climate change. But combating climate change cannot be done solely through individual actions. It needs changes to systems, including our housing and transport systems. If we take climate and equity seriously, we should not be blocking the forms of housing that are most energy efficient and most affordable, such as apartments. I've heard people criticize Thrive as one size fits all. I think it's the exact opposite. Too much of the county currently is restricted to the one size of single family housing. And that one size doesn't even fit all, doesn't fit all the people who want to live in this county. And I particularly lo love how Thrive describes planning for people instead of cars. I, I love the Thrive's plan's ideas for enhancing public transport, transit, and walkability, which will support action on climate and improve equity. And even for those who drive, better public transport, together with ideas like congestion pricing and reducing oversupply of parking, will mean a better driving experience by reducing demands on roads. Enrique Pinalosa, the former mayor of Bogota, once said that an advanced city is not where even the poor use cars, but rather one where even the rich use public transport. Montgomery County has world-class institutions. It's the home of the NIH, NOAA, Walter Reed, and the FDA. It should have a world-class high-frequency transit system to match that. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Bill Scanlon. Mr. Scanlon, are you ready? You have two minutes. You may begin. Good evening, my name is Bill Scanlon, and I am president of the Woodside Civic Association, 
Woodside is in Silver Spring, bordered by Georgia Avenue on our east, Metro CSX and Purple Line on our west, Spring Streets to the uh, south, and 16th Street of Georgia on our north end. We are a neighborhood of some 330 homes, 25% of which are townhomes. Last fall, Woodside residents voted to oppose plans to rezone a portion of our community under the Silver Spring Downtown and Adjacent Communities Plan. That plan will not result in more affordable housing in Woodside, just more density. Worse, it would strip our residents from having any input into the type of housing be being built in it. In that vote, Woodside called for continued neighborhood engagement in the development of more dense housing as it impacts green space, stormwater management, parking, infrastructure, things that are important both to current and future Woodside residents. But that vote and resolution also supported efforts such as Thrive 2050, at least what we knew about it at that time. And Woodside has done more than just support. We have offered specific ideas on creating attainable housing opportunities in Woodside and called for streamlining of processes for developing accessory dwelling units in our neighborhood and countywide. Less than a week after testifying before the planning board on their rushed attainable housing strategies initiative and their proposed radical rezoning of Woodside and other neighborhoods, several Woodside residents are back here tonight to implore the council to slow the process down, to hear from people who live in the corridor communities. Regarding its effect on Thrive 2050, we agree with the county executive that thousands of county homeowners have absolutely no idea what AHSI is or what is about to happen to their properties in the next few months. Woodside isn't saying, not in my backyard. We are saying, let us see the plans. Let us have a say in maintaining and deciding the character of the built environment in our neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scanlon. Our next speaker this evening is Mario Alvarado Villa. Mr. Villa has requested language assistance. Ms. Lavoy. Sí, por favor, necesito. Perfecto, señor, por favor, pido que usted eh, a, eh, dé su testimonio eh, más o menos párrafo por párrafo y yo voy a interpretar cuando usted haga una pausa. Ok. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Mario Alvarado Villa. Sigue un poco, un poco más, por favor. Ok. Soy líder comunitario del condado de Montgomery y director de la organización Sin Fines de Lucro, INCAEF. Good evening, Mike. No, sigue, sigue, por favor. La cual se centra, centra su esfuerzo en ayudar a jóvenes inmigrantes en riesgo a través del deporte. Good evening. My name is Mario Alvarado Villa. I'm a, le a, communitarian, a community leader in Montgomery County and director of, an or of a nonprofit organization called INCAEF, which uh, focuses its efforts in helping immigrant youngsters who are in risk of being deported. Ahora más que nunca nuestro condado y el mundo entero enfrenta un cáncer colectivo que ha venido a crear generaciones apáticas con bajas aspiraciones y conformistas, pero también ha venido a entorpecer las viejas las viejas generaciones, me refiero a la adicción a los aparatos electrónicos. Now more than ever, our county and the whole world faces a collective cancer that has come to create generations that are apathetic with low aspirations and they're conformist, but um, it also has created uh, problems for the older generations. I'm referring, referring to addiction to electronic devices. El superar ese cáncer es un trabajo en equipo que comienza en nuestros hogares y se expande a nuestras comunidades. Overcoming this cancer requires a team effort that begins in our homes and expands throughout our communities. Hoy quisiera pedirles la creación de nuevos sitios de recreación multifuncionales que cuenten con instalaciones que permitan practicar diferentes tipos de deportes, como fútbol, soccer, baloncesto, tenis, voleibol, fútbol de playa, natación y zumba, por mencionar algunos. I'd like to ask you for to create places that are uh, good for multifunctional recreation uh, and are equipped for different sports like football, soccer, basketball, tennis, volleyball, beach football, swimming, Zumba, to mention a few. 
es crucial que se imparta entrenamiento de todos estos deportes de manera gratuita o a un bajo costo para que todos nuestros residentes tengan acceso a ellos y sobre todo tengan la oportunidad de convertirse en los nuevos atletas que en un futuro representen a este condado y a esta nación. Los deportes no deberían de estar limitados a aquellas personas que tienen la capacidad de pagar. Estos deben de ser inclusivos y abiertos para niños, jóvenes y adultos de todos los estratos sociales. It's crucial to provide training in all these sports that's free or low cost so that every, all the residents can have access to them and especially have the opportunity to become the new athletes in the, that the future, that in the future will represent this county and this nation. The sports shouldn't be limited to those who can pay, uh, these have the capacity to pay. These should be inclusive and open to children and youngsters and adults from all social strata. Sugiero que estos centros multideportivos se establezcan en áreas con un alto número de complejos de apartamentos, en donde predominan familias de escasos recursos. Estoy seguro que con estas opciones los aparatos electrónicos pasarán a un tercer plano y tendremos una comunidad mejor enfocada en hacer deporte. Buenas noches. Que Dios les bendiga. I, I suggest that the uh, uh, multi Uh, sports centers are established in areas with the highest number of apartment complexes where uh, there are families of low income. I'm sure that these options um, would, uh, with, with, with these options, electronic devices will be left in the background. And excuse me, uh, the council, the interpreter wants to make a correction. Uh, I want to make clear, uh, apparently I did not earlier, that INCAEF Uh, centers its efforts in helping immigrant youngsters um, who are at risk and helps them through sports. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is David Sears. Mr. Sears, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin. Good evening. My name is Dave Sears. I've lived in Montgomery County nearly half a century, first in Silver Spring in an apartment and now in Bethesda in a single family house. One of the things I really like about Thrive is the push to offer many more housing options throughout the county. So when I want to live in a pleasant, walkable, mixed use, mixed income neighborhood, I can do so. Whether or not an apartment or a house better suits my lifestyle or my budget. Everyone who wants to live in Montgomery County should be able to find a comfortable and affordable place to live. Thrive's push to offer attainable housing throughout the county is exactly what we need to give more households more viable housing choices in more neighborhoods. Thrive's overall embrace of smart growth principles is welcome and commendable. We need to move the county away from our current over-dependence on cars. Thus, we need to strengthen the ability of more folks to get where they want and need to go without always having to rely on the automobile. This means land use and transportation strategies that expand viable options for transit, walking, and biking. And I will note, in spite of what an earlier speaker told you, I'm a senior and I'm willing and able to walk and bike in any weather. Um, come join me anytime you'd like to. Um, I'd also like to commend Thrive's emphasis on good design. Our success as a county will depend in part upon providing a pleasant and fun place to live, work, and play. Good design of buildings and communities will contribute to this success. In sum, I urge the county to support Thrive. This plan will serve as the foundation for Montgomery County's future and a vibrant future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sears. Our next speaker this evening is Kathy McGuire. Ms. McGuire, you have two minutes. You may begin. Thank you. Uh, good evening, members of the council. I am Kathy McGuire, and I am the co-president for the League of Women Voters of Montgomery County. The League continues to support the work that has gone into Thrive Montgomery 2050 and its revisions. 
We also continue to believe that the plan would benefit from having an evaluation process in the main document rather than a separate document. The public needs to know on a regular basis how the county is tracking progress towards its goals and what the timetable is for evaluation. Tonight, I will highlight five of the Thrive <clears throat> areas. Transportation. Prioritizing transit will have a major effect on equity, the environment, population growth, health, and our economy. The county is making strides, but the league encourages a more coordinated effort across all transit modes to produce a greater impact. Land use. The, themes, the key themes of the document thrive, such as urbanism, housing, transfer, transforming major roads into boulevards, regional solutions, and diversity as a strength, are all things that could be in the lead position, so we support those. Housing. Montgomery County continues to need more housing, especially units for very low-income families. We need larger units for larger families, and we need the missing middle attainable housing designated for low and middle income. We urge the plan to support appropriate density to achieve the maximum obtainable housing along the corridors designated for growth. Environment. The League agrees with the county that, that climate change is the most important environmental factor facing us between now and 2050, and achieving 100% clean energy should help decrease the level of greenhouse gases. We appreciate the recognition of the need of, excuse me, we appreciate and the recognition of the need to change from wedges and corridors to a complete community concept. Ms. McGuire, I'm sorry for the interruption, but your time is up. Okay. Thank you very much for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Michael DeLong. Mr. DeLong, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Michael DeLong. Uh, I'm a resident of Silver Spring, 31-year-old renter, and I've lived in Montgomery County since 2015. Uh, I just wanted to give a few brief remarks, strongly support uh, Thrive Montgomery 2050's vision. Uh, Montgomery County is an excellent place to live. We're getting more residents every year. In order to accommodate them, uh, we should build more housing of all types in major centers and corridors, especially more affordable housing and a variety of different dwellings, not just single family homes, but duplexes, triplexes, townhouses, small apartments, and even high rise apartments and condominiums. This will help promote, promote racial equality. And I'm encouraged by the plan statements that we need to use land more efficiently and promote compact development and make social inclusion a high priority. Uh, I'd prefer to see housing mentioned as a human right as it was in the earlier drafts and that all tenants should have a right to legal counsel in eviction cases. Um, one of the great things about Montgomery County is our parks, places like Wheaton Regional Park, Sligo Creek, and others are fantastic. I'm encouraged that Thrive Montgomery is focused on focusing on promoting access to them, uh, especially walkable access, and they promote outdoor activity and exercise. And I would, however, like an improvement there to be more emphasis on creating a tree canopy. Trees improve neighborhoods, provide shade, and counteract uh, the urban heat island effect. They help hold the soil in place. They're just generally, they make neighborhoods nicer. And uh, also Montgomery County needs more and better public transportation and to move away from uh, heavy reliance on the automobile. I'm very excited also that Thrive Montgomery, the plan is not planning and constructing new highways, which would further increase traffic. Uh, I'm encouraged by Vision Zero, which strives to ensure there are no traffic fatalities or serious injuries. Uh, crossing places like Georgia Avenue is incredibly dangerous and the county has a number of excellent trails and bike lanes, which we should work to connect. Uh, finally, we should embrace transit-oriented mixed-use development uh, with both residential and commercial buildings. I like being able to leave my house and walk to nearby grocery stores, restaurants, shops, and parks. More and more people are appreciating the benefits of this development, and it's more environmentally friendly, provides opportunities, and uh, it should be one of our top priorities. So this is a good draft. It could be improved. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. DeLong. Our next speaker this evening is Stephen Kraft. Mr. Kraft, you have two minutes. You may begin. Okay, hello, sorry. Um, my name is Stephen. I'm a resident of Montgomery County. Uh, 
I've been a resident for 20 years. Um, I've rented and lived in group homes, south townhome. I support the rice plan to make Montgomery County more affordable and more inclusive by building more housing, focusing on walkable communities, and expanding method, uh, modes of, tra of transit. Montgomery County is expected to see a huge influx of people in coming years. Already, housing prices in our county are unaffordable. We are going to continue to grow as a county and be inclusive, fight inequality, provide jobs, and follow through on Thrive's vision for walkable mixed-income communities. Uh, in addition, our county is committed to fighting climate change and housing transportation is an enormous source of CO2. The county also has a Vision Zero campaign to reduce traffic jets, but the only way to do any of these things is by implementing measures such as those in Thrive 2050. If we say no, if we listen to NIMBYs, our county will not be more equitable, housing will not get affordable or equitable, carbon emissions will not be reduced. Uh, that means more pollution, more forests will get demolished as homes have to build out, uh, and historical racist zoning and segregation will also stay in place. St instead, I say yes, and I support the vision of Thrive 2050. I support building more homes, more affordable housing options, build walkable communities, expanding mass transit, and being, welcome, uh, being a welcoming county for all. The county has ambitious goals to combat climate change, reduce vehicle deaths, and make a more livable, equitable county for everybody. The only way to meet these goals is by implementing Thrive 2050. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Our next speaker this evening is Francois Carrier. Ms. Carrier, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin. Good evening. Um, I apologize, my camera doesn't seem to be working. For the record, my name is Francois Carrier, and I'm speaking tonight on my own behalf as a 24-year resident of Montgomery County who has spent a great deal of time thinking about and observing land use trends and patterns. I am here to support the draft comprehensive plan that is before you as a forward-thinking plan grounded in three essential goals, equity, economic development, and environmental sustainability. I applaud the planning board and planning department for identifying and embracing these three goals, which will be key to creating a future for Montgomery County that can be as bright as its past. Thrive Montgomery will set the stage for future master plans and zoning changes that will create new possibilities for more complete communities so that more of the county's residents can experience the convenience of 15-minute living. More fundamentally, Thrive will promote the new land use patterns that the county needs to achieve greater equity, rather than continuing to have our neighborhoods diverge as some become more and more affluent with bigger and bigger houses, while others make do with older, crowded housing stock and little in the way of renovation or improvement. The changes that Thrive will support are also important for the county's economic future. We need the changes that Thrive will promote to meet the demands of our time for more housing, more vibrant neighborhoods, and a land use system that makes it easy to build a variety of housing types and non-residential buildings that complement one another, rather than limiting the opportunity for those synergies to a tiny portion of the county's land area. Montgomery County's many decades of careful land use regulation have given us so many advantages. We have vibrant downtowns, attractive neighborhoods, a first-class park system with lots of open space and recreational opportunities, and of course, the Ag Reserve. It's time to get ready for the next 50 years of good land use regulation by adopting a forward-thinking general plan that directly supports the county's major policy goals. Years from now, I believe you all will be proud to have this plan as part of your legacy. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Kristen Mink. Ms. Mink, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin when you're ready. Hi, my name is Kristen Mink, and I'm a lifelong resident of Silver Spring and a current candidate for the Montgomery County Council. Thank you for hearing my testimony today. I support the planning board draft of Thrive 2050, and I urge you to uphold its vision for sustainable, inclusive county. When I was looking for a place to start a family as a young teacher, I couldn't imagine living anywhere besides the neighborhood I grew up in by Blair High School. And I didn't have to because we were able to buy my childhood home from my parents. They bought this house in the 70s, a time when the first version of the deed they saw included a racially restrictive covenant that would have prevented my mom, a Chinese immigrant, from purchasing the home. Thankfully, explicit racial discrimination like that wasn't and isn't upheld. Montgomery County is a place that takes great pride in diversity. However, we must come to grips with the fact that the effects of historic racial discrimination in housing and development do live on here today. We will not be able to overcome our housing crisis without rezoning our neighborhoods to welcome multifamily housing. 
While I had the good fortune to be able to move back into my neighborhood, many childhood friends tried to do the same, only to end up moving further out with a long commute or to another county or state. Single family home prices are skyrocketing. A house on my block recently sold in just two weeks for $640,000 and is now being flipped and bumped out of the price range of even more young families and especially families of color. If that house was turned into a duplex, I can name two families who've moved back to the area for it. If we want to attract and retain young professionals heading into their prime earning years and local entrepreneurs willing to take the risk of starting new businesses, if we want to ensure community members who'd staff those businesses have stable housing and that housing affordable for those at the lowest income levels remains available to those who need it, then we need more income restricted and market rate housing attainable across nearly every income level. We must also prioritize connectedness. In the Montgomery County of our future, all our residents will be able to access work, school, local shops, restaurants, green spaces quickly and easily just by walking or public transit. This is already a reality in a few in our county and it's a necessity everywhere if we're taking climate justice and racial equity seriously. We cannot allow ourselves to hold back by outdated and misplaced fears. If Thrive 2050 is delayed or obstructed, our opportunities as a community, will do, our environment will be harmed and our neighbors will suffer. Adopting Thrive along with suggested amendments like greater renter protections and bridging the east-west divide is a necessary first step for the joyful work of building an affordable, connected, and resilient community where all of us can thrive. I urge the council to adopt Thrive 2050 so that together we can move Montgomery County boldly and proudly into the future. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Cecily Basker. Ms. Basker, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you. My name is Cecily Basquier, and I'm the former mayor of the town of Chevy Chase, but I testify this evening in my personal capacity as a resident and small business owner in the county. I focus my comments on two main issues, process and housing. On process, in my role as mayor for the past year, I worked to try to engage and educate our neighbors throughout the plans drafting process, with limited success. Many of my neighbors still do not understand the process or what is at stake. In a time dominated by a health crisis and polarizing national issues, the focus of most residents has been elsewhere. I understand the desire to update the general plan after almost 30 years, and I commend much of the forward thinking in this plan, but it proposes significant changes that many residents still do not know about. Please recognize this, expand public outreach even further, and do not rush to approve this plan for the sake of approving a plan. On housing, I support the expansion of affordable and attainable housing. In particular, I support financial incentives to boost creation of more affordable housing, targeted strategies to prevent gentrification and to incentivize preservation of naturally occurring affordable housing, and significant investment in the eastern part of the county as an important priority. Some proposals under consideration, however, will not create more affordable or even attainable housing in neighborhoods like mine, where even small units will sell at high market prices unattainable for most people. Small expensive units will do nothing to address the county's unfortunate exclusionary history or promote greater racial equity or diversity. This is a large diverse county and strategies must be tailored to fit neighborhoods. In some places, the plan commendably recognizes that, but the elimination of compatibility appears inconsistent with a context sensitive approach. It is unlikely that any single set of countywide design-based regulations, standards, or patterns will achieve the professed goals in every neighborhood. I support adopting reasonable rules for missing middle housing and shared housing types that retain the concept of compatibility. One size does not fit all here, and to accomplish the goal of providing sufficient, reasonably priced, diverse housing for the next 30 years, the rules should be tailored appropriately. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Quentin Raymond. Mr. Raymond, I hope I'm saying that correctly. You have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin. My name is Quentin Ryan. I represent the Cloverly Civic Association and reside in Cloverly. Uh, thank, council members, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. The purpose of creating the 1964 Wedges and Quarter Plan was to protect the rural areas from, quote, urban chaos, unquote. Under this original plan, Cloverly protects the environment and protects, provides housing, retail parks, and worship spaces for a vibrant and diverse community with a with a rural appearance. Thrive Montgomery's plan, which proposes making Cloverly an area for urban development, is directly against the Cloverly Master Plan. As a leader of the Cloverly Civic Group, I'm representing residents from very different backgrounds who value Cloverly and join together to protest against the changes to this important ecological, social, and racially balanced area. Homes are nestled in the forests of Cloverly. Trees protect the air we breathe, <clears throat> cool the streams that support adequate habitats, 
and tame the increasing deluges of stormwater. The Paint Branch Special Protection Area protects the aquatic habitats, rural cluster zoning protects the drinking water in the Ducket Reservoir, large lot residential zoning protects the headwaters of the Northwest, Northwest Branch, which prevents flooding downstream the Acosta, Anacostia River and pollution into the Chesapeake Bay. Cloverly also has a positive social and racial history. Home to freed slaves who settled the area in the 1700s, freed in 1844 and given land by the Quakers. Becoming landowners in this community is a foundation for their realization of freedom and racial equity. These residents have partnered with the community to protect the environment that would not be possible under the Thrive Plan. The Thrive Plan supports urbanism, but also needs to protect the environment and a rural suburban lifestyle. The Thrive Plan needs to be more balanced to provide greater protection for the, to the environment, watershed, habitats, stormwater management, and to support racial equality in our rural communities. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Kimblin Prasad. Kimblin, you have two minutes for your testimony. You may begin when you're ready. Good evening, my name is Kimlin Prasad. I'm the president of the Wheaton Regional Park Neighborhood Association, and we recently voted to join the Thrive Montgomery Neighborhood Coalition. Tonight, I'm speaking as an individual who lives Thrive 2050 is not a plan, but pages of ideas, a wish list that hasn't taken into consideration our communities and how we currently live. Wheaton is both racially and economically diverse. Thrive will create gentrification by allowing by right the building of duplexes, triplexes, small apartment buildings to be built at market rate. Property taxes will no doubt have to increase. And we saw how this all happened in DC. Homeowners here in Wheaton who have worked very hard to get these houses will no longer be able to afford their property taxes and will be forced to sell. We also have a large senior population here who are living on a fixed income and will be forced out. It would also create urban sprawl. People who can't afford to live down county will move up county where the homes and apartments are a little cheaper. They will need to get cars in order to get to and from their jobs, creating urban sprawl. Black Americans who have the lowest home ownership of all ethnic groups will continue to be denied generational wealth due to this plan. The parking situation, which is a huge issue in Montgomery County, um, because people in Wheaton use their cars to do their jobs. It's not, a, it's not a luxury item, it's how they do their jobs. And it was the county council which allowed people to park their commercial vehicles on residential roads, causing people to use cones and trash cans to save their parking spaces. And now the plan is to add more. What this plan does is create a greater divide between the have and the have nots. What this plan highlights are the subtleties of systemic racism in our institutions. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Pam Wanvier. Ms. Wanvier, you have two minutes. You may begin when you're ready. Ms. Wanvier, are you with us? Yes, I am. I'm okay. sorry. You, That's you, okay. There's a, little, there's a little window that came up, which is blocking my what I'm trying to say. So, okay. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I've lived in Woodside neighborhood for the last 41 years. I am concerned about being able to afford to continue to stay in my house as proper ta property taxes increase with density. I am concerned about the sweeping changes proposed uh, now with the inability of people to meet in person in our communities and for planning meetings, the rapid and uh, the rapid changes and sweeping proposals of the planning board are difficult to keep up with and to share with our neighbors when we are unable to meet and gather in person because of the COVID-19 lands. COVID-19, the landscape of vacancies and how and where people work has changed dramatically since the proposals were constructed. There are um, properties that now could be used to address the density and availability needs. I have watched the planning board meetings for the last several months 
and listen to the uh, testimonies of citizens, civic associations, and groups from all around the, the county. And from those testimonies, the majority are not opposed to the changes, but to the sweeping magnitude and directions of the current proposals, which take much of the input um, as residents out of the process. Developers will be the benef beneficiaries, not the quality of life for the citizens and the green space of the environment in our existing neighborhoods and communities. Under the guise of affordable housing, the missing middle, middle housing built in our neighborhood is more expensive than many of the single family homes that exist here in Woodside. The developers were the ones to benefit, not the lower income people we were told would benefit. As it stands, it is, our, it is our green and environmentally friendly neighborhood where people living in surrounding apartment buildings walk, run, and exercise their dogs for a feeling of peace uh, in their lives rather than the urban alternative. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Elizabeth Joyce. Ms. Joyce, you have two minutes. You may begin. Thank you. Can you hear me? We can. It's a little low. Okay. Can you hear me now? We can. Okay. We can hear you, but it is a little low. So if you could speak up, that would be helpful. I will do that. Um, I'm from Silver Spring. I support the goals of Thrive 2050, but not claim that by right densification of single family zones is the only solution to our, our future housing needs. And it's very interesting that this evening, so few of the details regarding densification have been brought out. Successful densification, even if you buy into that concept, uh, plans from other jurisdictions show why our Thrive Plan falls short. Vancouver, British Columbia's Brent Todarian, who led his city's model plan, rejects what he calls stupid density, sweeping but poorly calibrated zoning changes. Quote, I don't believe in absolute NIMBY code, he says, but I also don't buy the argument that we should just get rid of all zoning codes and have at it build as much as we can. By eliminating single family zoning in hopes that complete communities will magically evolve, Thrive would do exactly that. Vancouver starts with a deliberate regulatory framework. Every decision is made by working backwards from what citizens want. But our planning board has done the opposite, including very few of residents' suggestions in its proposed Thrive plan. For example, Thrive doubles the originally suggested radius for densification around Metro from one half mile to one mile, which far exceeds most national models for 15 minute walkability. It also eliminates minimum parking requirements but missing middle expert Tony Perez saw the planning board uh, hearing in March that his award-winning company uh, supports one space per unit, and we're not having any. Under Thrive, the county will continue using ZTA zoning tax amendments to bypass the infrastructure requirements for the schools, roads, public safety, and stormwater runoff management that all residents need. Instead of insisting on master planning to ensure these amenities, Thrive leaves these details to chance. Magical thinking will not solve our county's housing problems before enacting an inequitable urban-based vision for our geographically diverse 500 square mile county. The council should insist on a better plan. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Joyce. Our next speaker this evening is Jan Brito. Ms. Brito, you have two minutes. You may begin. Good evening, Council President Hunker and members of the Council. My name is Jan Brito, and I serve as the President of the Greater Capital Area Association of Realtors, the voice of Montgomery County's more than 12,000 realtors and other real estate professionals, as well as thousands of area consumers and residents. This evening, I would like to share our association's perspective on the Thrive Montgomery 2050 Planning Board Draft. The housing landscape in Montgomery County is at an inflection point. Prices are at all-time highs, inventory at all-time lows, and the divide in housing between those that own and those that do not is growing. These inequities are further amplified when looking at homeownership rates among minority households. The planning board has been putting together a blueprint we can work from to better our communities for the next few decades, and the message it sends is clear. We need more housing. We need more workforce housing, more MPDUs, and more luxury housing. 
We need to fill in the gaps of missing middle housing, and we need an assortment in the types of housing we develop in all categories to meet the varying demand. While the short-term gains of high real estate prices can be seen in the revenues the county collects, the current marketplace is not sustainable. Younger residents and blue-collar blue professionals, as well as our first responders and county government personnel, are continuously forced outside our jurisdiction to find homes. We cannot hope to sustain our county's superb network of services if those who make up those efforts must leave when they punch out each day. More housing across the economic spectrum is among the strongest tools to stabilize such a spike in housing costs. Based on the housing development here in Montgomery County, over the last 15 years, we are already grossly behind the curve. Thank you for your time this evening. Our full testimony will be submitted and we look forward to our continued work together to make Montgomery County a welcoming home for all. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker this evening is Alexandra De Stanito. Ms. Stanito, you have two minutes, you may begin. Thank you. Uh, good evening, council members. I am Dr. Des Denito, president of Lincoln Park Civic Association in Rockville. I read with interest the draft for Thrive 2050. I found it interesting that equality is part of the proposal at different level, but the reality is a different things. When it comes to implementing, we need more details. The previous plan certainly contributed to disparities in community wealth, quality of life and health, leaving close to a 30 gap year a year, a 30 year gap in life expectancy between residents living in Chevy Chase and those living in Silver Spring. The problem is when it comes to economic development, minority rich neighborhoods always seems to draw the short stick. And we end up with the polluting paths with industrial zones, sometimes heavy industrial zones less than one mile from residences. Reforms and investments are needed and we should be, it should be tar tailored, target in ways overlapping the, the MOCO DHSS F report uh, map uh, from 2018. Equality to us is reform in zoning where heavy industrial zones would be banned within two miles from residences. Light industrial zones should be redefined, excluding air and noise pollution. Equality means access to more moderately priced unit with affordable energy costs, with sustainable solution in walkable, bikeable neighborhoods. We are in favor of zoning reforms, providing for missing middle housing close to transportation. Equity also means more community gardens and less food desert in the less healthy zip codes. In Lincoln Park, we have been waiting for redevelopment on Stone Street Avenue in Rockville for more than 25 years. We hope that we will not have to wait until 2050. I see real estate developers and planning commissions pushing for industrial zones have effectively pushed black and brown people out of their neighborhoods for decades. We hope for real change and a more equitable future. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your testimony. Mr. President, that wraps up the speakers for tonight's public hearing. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Kennedy, and thank you to all of you who provided testimony tonight, as well as everyone watching at home, um, and everyone who's emailed and called us. Please continue to uh, make your views known to us. We make better policies when we hear from all the voices in our county. The Fed Committee will take this up at a future work session. Thank you so much for sharing your views with us, and have a wonderful evening. We are adjourned.